we did of course show a, uh, follow European markets lower but uh, we still did seem to be holding up quite well but starting to slip back again now. That's right. It is a soft day on the market today, but really as expected. I mean, we saw 140 points uh, off the Dow overnight, and European markets tumble quite significantly as well. As you mentioned, it is a very risk-off day today, pretty typical-looking risk-off day. We're seeing sort of the cyclical sectors such as materials and energy and industrials all lower and being sold off, while investors sort of buying into some of the more defensive sectors such as utilities, uh, telecom and healthcare, which are all outperforming today. Uh, one stock to note, BHP actually hitting three-year lows today. Uh, it's trading down around $30.65. It, uh, it's down below its previous lowest close of 30.75 back earlier this month. So we'd like to see BHP come up and rise and close back above that level. Uh, but in terms of uh, the market in general, definitely Euro remains, Eurozone remains the focus. Uh, we saw uh, there was actually four straight days of uh, positivity in terms of Spanish bond yields was broken last night as yields rose once again. Uh, that's really on the back of so further concerns uh, moving towards the EU summit later this week. The market really not expecting much coming out of this summit later this week. We also saw uh, Spain and Cyprus, uh, Cyprus both, both file for uh, aid for their desperate banking systems at the moment and uh, certainly Moody's looks poised to further downgrade some of Spain's banks so it all just re turned into a uh, risk off session in global markets overnight overnight and our market really following and we're back down close to that 4000 level on the ASX 200 which has provided significant support uh, in the past if we have a look at a 30 day chart of the ASX 200 we have only closed below that 4000 point once which was on the 4th of June uh, so that does provide significant resistance uh, uh, sorry significant support for the ASX 200 so hopefully we can remain above that level and one of the companies in focus today, Tim, Fortescue Metals, we're seeing shares off about two-tenths of a percent at the moment. Investors seem to have digested that news of Andrew Forrest increasing his holding in the company. Earlier, uh, shares were rallying on the news. Do you think this is a sign of, uh, in terms of motives by Mr Forrest? Is he seeking to build confidence perhaps in the company? I mean, the shares had slid quite significantly over the past three months or so. I think that's definitely a factor here. Uh, certainly the shares performing well today on a risk-off day. Fortescue on a risk-off day you would expect to be uh, underperforming the market, falling more heavily than the broader index, but it has remained fairly flat in trade today after uh, Andrew Forrest did increase his ownership to 32%. He bought up another 12.8 million, uh, million shares, uh, around $62 million worth. And um, it, there's also reports that he could be looking to possibly buy further into the company as well. Now, Fortescue, of course, is a very volatile stock, and we have seen the stock uh, fall significantly uh, over the last couple of months. They are, they are very leveraged to China and also being a signal commodity producer uh, does make the stock particularly volatile but it's off 20 percent from its March highs um, that's over a period where the broader markets only lost six percent and um, other big weight miners such as BHP and Rayo have only lost around 11 percent and 15 percent respectively so it has been an underperformer but certainly Twiggy Forrest will be looking to build a bit of confidence into Fortescue certainly there's been a lot of short selling a lot of reports uh, such as uh, Jim Chanos the famous short seller uh, back in April announcing that he thought it's a bit of a value value trap. That's seen uh, Fortescue's shares really suffering since then as well. Uh, but I think he's also looking to build a personal stake here. Uh, at the moment, this the price may look attractive for him, certainly considering that Fortescue is looking to really boost output and production, which could see a significant rise in revenues. And um, if that was to happen um, sort of on target, on, on plan, uh, could see a bit of a rally in Fortescue's share price. So timing might be an issue for him here as well. But uh, in terms of uh, technical levels, if we have a look at a one-year chart of Fortescue metals, uh, it's sort of undergone a little bit of a, uh, a reversal uh, over the past month or so and it sort of moved back above the other day that $4.90 which has provided uh, which has seen significant resistance in the past it's now slipped a little bit below that but um, that was certainly a technical sign that we could see a little bit of a rise in the share price and just finally Tim I have to ask you about the media space um, a lot of those stocks are in negative territory today after all the, the changes in that media space we've heard um, over the last week and this morning again Fairfax media shares off about uh, 2%, but 7 West down still at 10% at the moment on the, the news of it, a new CEO being appointed there, Don Volte. And we've also seen Merrill Lynch drop its target price on the company. Do you think this is why, partly why investors are reacting so badly? 
Well, certainly media sector in space uh, in focus today. Uh, we've seen Fairfax hitting new lows. Uh, we've seen a reshuffle in senior management at Seven West, uh, a new chief editor at The Age, and um, it goes on 10 holdings changes, uh, taking up entitlements from Gina Reinhart and Murdoch, etc. So really in focus today. And Fairfax hitting new record lows. Uh, it was down over 4% earlier in trade. It has paired back some of those losses, uh, but certainly it's trading lower, around 55 cents at the moment. Uh, there was that uh, that segment last night that saw Gina Reinhart say that she would consider it selling her stake in uh, Fairfax, which is around 18.6%. Um, and that's one of the reasons we're seeing some weakness in Fairfax today, certainly. Uh, she is seeking up to three seats on the board. Uh, she became a substantial uh, shareholder in Fairfax back in uh, February earlier this year, and that was buying in around 75 to 80 cents per share. So she would be taking a significant loss if she was to sell out of a, some of her position now with the stock trade cl trading closer to 55 cents. But certainly Fairfax undergoing some big changes at the moment, 1,900 job cuts. We're seeing senior editors stepping down and new ones appointed. So a big, big game changer for Fairfax at the moment. Uh, in terms of Seven West Media, the share, the share market has not reacted reacted well to uh, this shuffle we've seen in senior management today with the ex-Woodside Petroleum boss uh, moving into the new CEO position of Seven West Media and probably a few factors here. Certainly the, uh, certainly the, uh, the ex-CEO of Seven West Media uh, David Leckie had done, a, had done quite an excellent job there. He really boosted Channel 7 in particular. So we've seen him move out to a director position at the Seven Group Holdings and we've seen uh, Don Volte move into the new CEO position and there is a little bit of a reputation in the market that he does uh, push high production and uh, forecast targets and he does have a little bit of, uh, has seen some of these targets missed at Woodside Petroleum and the shares today really being punished down around 10%.